The first Tudor queen was Elizabeth of York, and she married Henry VII following the defeat of King Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field. She was a woman whose marriage united the two different sides of the Wars of the Roses, and it was believed that Elizabeth's children would go on to secure the new Tudor dynasty on the throne for centuries. In just over 100 years following the beginning of the Tudor period, the dynasty had come to an end and Elizabeth of York herself had suffered an early death. But she died inside the same walls of the Tower of London, where two of her future daughters-in-law would lose their heads on the orders of her son, Henry VIII. Elizabeth had a significant amount of heartbreak in her life, following the death of her son and heir to the throne, Arthur Tudor. But she too died not long after plunging Henry VII into a horrific bout of upset and grief. But the true cause of the Queen's death has been debated. But what is the disturbing post-mortem of the first Tudor Queen and how did she die? In 1502, after years of marrying King Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, were expecting yet another child as the Queen was pregnant again. She had a number of other children, including the notorious future successor of her husband, Henry VIII, a man who would plunge England into a significant amount of turmoil during his reign. Henry VII and Elizabeth of York had stabilised the throne of England, and by having a number of children, they wanted to secure the dynasty on the throne for some time. But Elizabeth of York entered her confinement, as was tradition during the early 16th century, inside the Tower of London. This was a period of time before she gave birth, where men were banned from entering her quarters, and on the walls of her rooms were a number of tapestries and positive images to greet the arrival of the new royal child. It was aimed to promote positivity, and one thing to also mention is the different nature of the Tower of London's reputation at this time. The Tower of London was a royal residence, and it was not really considered a royal prison or a place of execution. There had been executions carried out inside the walls, as George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, had been drowned in a barrel of Malmsey wine inside one part of the tower. Also, it was where a number of high-profile people were murdered, including Henry VI, the Lancastrian King of England. He was slaughtered inside the Wakefield Tower whilst he prayed at his chapel, presumably being battered to death or being stabbed. But also, it was during the Wars of the Roses where the princes in the tower disappeared or where they were murdered upon the orders of King Richard III. But the tower was not thought as a place of execution specifically at this time and was held almost in the same regard as, say, Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle would be today. On the 2nd of February 1503, the Queen gave birth to a daughter, whom she named Catherine after her daughter-in-law, Catherine of Aragon, who had married her tragic elder son, Arthur Tudor. Catherine was being held virtually under house arrest as there were debates as to what to do with her following the death of the heir and her husband, Arthur. But there was a great hope for this daughter, and presumably later this daughter, Catherine, would one day marry an important and powerful European prince to secure alliances and wealth for the King Henry VII. But there would be a significant amount of heartbreak coming for the Tudor King as, within days of giving birth, his newly born daughter and then his wife would succumb to their deaths. It was very common during the Tudor period for children to pass away at a young age and it is believed that around 50% of all children born during the period did not survive past their fifth birthdays. But further tragedy hit as nine days after giving birth, Elizabeth of York, inside of her bedrooms in the Tower of London, was gravely ill. She had took a very bad turn for the worst following giving birth, and she was suffering from a postpartum infection. This was common during the Tudor period, and childbirth was very dangerous, and Elizabeth of York was very ill. She would have suffered with severe fevers, 
But then the, the worst news was taken to the king that his wife Elizabeth had died from this infection. Childbirth was not as clean as it is today and the king himself became completely distraught and inconsolable. He was heartbroken, and it was only his mother who could calm him down, and he wept openly at court, and had to retire for some time because of his pain. But then a post-mortem investigation would take place at, of Elizabeth of York's body during the embalming process. It was noted what happened during the embalming process with regards to searching for a cause of death. Following the death of her grandson, Edward VI, it was found that his lungs had severe ulcers on them and that this could have caused his death. During Elizabeth's embalming, her heart was removed and her internal organs were also cut from her body to be buried away from her body. Her body was washed in wine and rose water and covered in other spices and balms. Spices were placed inside of her chest cavity and her children had, earlier before this, arrived to see her body, which had been dressed in her state robes. But during the embalming process, the Queen was then wrapped inside of a tight cerecloth, which had been cut into strips to preserve her, and she was then placed inside of a lead-lined coffin, and the wood of this was made from hollywood, and her coffin was then covered in black velvet cloth. Following the embalming, Elizabeth's coffin then lay in state inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula within the walls of the Tower of London, and her ladies held vigils around the coffin, and they stayed with her for the funeral. The funeral of the first Tudor Queen was huge, and it was a massive spectacle of public mourning. Her body was then taken into Westminster Abbey, and the whole abbey had been decorated in dark mourning cloth. And before the final burial ceremony took place, there was a huge banquet held for the Queen's honour. When the coffin was lowered into a grave near to the New Lady Chapel, which was being built, the effigy of the Queen was lifted from it, and her servants threw their ceremonial staves of office inside of the grave. But later, the first Tudor Queen's coffin was exhumed, and she was then buried inside of a new tomb which was made for her and her husband, and was placed in the heart of the newly completed Lady Chapel, and Elizabeth of York is still laid to rest today. One thing to consider, though, is that her burial vault has been broken into a number of times. So, as her granddaughter Elizabeth I was placed inside of the vault alongside her and her husband following the death of the final Tudor monarch, later Elizabeth I's coffin was removed to be buried elsewhere inside of the abbey, and afterwards... The first Stuart king, James I, was interred in the vault with Elizabeth of York and Henry VII. It was noted during this that the coffin of Elizabeth of York had been destroyed to make room for James and that she was placed inside her tightly wrapped shroud inside of the vault, as was her husband. This means that without the protection of her coffin, Elizabeth of York's remains may be more exposed to the elements than they are, but it is believed that today her body is still tightly wrapped in the cerecloth. The investigations around her death have concluded that Elizabeth of York died from a postpartum infection. Recovering from birth takes a significant amount of time for women, and it can take months for the body to adjust. Many women experience pains for a long time and hormones fluctuate, but a postpartum infection causes a fever, and the symptoms of this are soreness in the stomach, and swelling of the abdomen, as well as chills and significant pain. The suffering can also have severe headaches and a feeling of being unwell, and today it's believed that up to 7% of women can contract a postpartum infection. Today this can be treated through different treatments, but during the Tudor period, there were no antibiotics or other forms of medication used to treat this condition, and there was also little knowledge about the causes of these infections as well as how to treat them. If caught quickly and treated today, there are no long-lasting infections. However, Elizabeth of York's infection could have caused sepsis that led to her death. But inside the walls of the Tower of London, Elizabeth of York suffered, and nine days after giving birth, she had a terrible death. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.